What's happening, HC Nation and all of our visitors? Hey, thanks so much for, for joining us during this uh, live stream. Uh, we are looking at um, telling you about alternative games. So if you want to uh, chime in via um, the live chat, you can ask us any questions that you might have. Your Give me one second. I'm going to grab my iPad so I can see that live chat. So one thing that we like to, to do is uh, I'm going to share with you a little bit about my background as we wait for people to come in. And that way we can uh, see what everyone's uh, thinking about. Okay, so I'm waiting to make sure that this is actually up and running. So there we go. Yeah, this looks great. Uh, one second, my iPad needs to be hooked up. Okay, so some people are still coming in. I'll give them a second. Make sure everyone can get this. Okay, so my name is Zach Edwards. I am the creator of Historical Conquest. And uh, I created Historical Conquest in order to be more of a, um, basically a cause to help youth get excited about history. Um, youth have always had a problem, especially in the public schools, of getting excited about school. Because a lot of times it's book learning, it's, it's lectures, it's... Uh, Things that are not that interesting to kids. And let's be honest, right now kids are all about games. They're about creatures, TV, screens. I mean, that that engages them and keeps them uh, solidified in what they, what they do. It's not a new thing, of course. I mean, we've been having problems with this for generations where youth would rather go to other things, especially things that are outside reality. My background, just so you know, um, I actually, when I was in high school, I played a game called Magic the Gathering. And my mom actually quite disliked magic. Um, she wanted me to get rid of it, and so I did. I got rid of Magic the Gathering. Um, actually, it was a negotiation. She used negotiations to, to get me to get rid of it. She basically said that the regular rule of not being able to drive until I got my Eagle Scout, if I got rid of my cards. So... I was turning 16 years old. I want to go on dates. That was my priority. So the cards went out the, out the, the door. Um, I actually sold a huge set that I probably spent a few hundred dollars on and uh, sold it for about 40 bucks. Right now, the value of it would be anywhere from five to $10,000. But you know what? I don't look back and I don't worry about it because it was something I wanted to do. My mom didn't force me to get rid of it. Instead, she negotiated. And she gave me different options. And it was a great benefit to be able to drive before I got my Eagle because my Eagle didn't even show up for, I think, another six months to a year. And so I was able to get it, but I didn't need the motivation of um, driving a car to get it. My motivation um, at that point was to start driving. So I got rid of something that was important to me, which is a game that, um, if you don't know, it's a little bit darker than Pokemon or Yu. Yo, uh, questionable things to some parents um, in the cards. So when I went off to college, I still liked the game of Magic. I, I didn't have any cards left. I didn't play it. But I still liked the game. I liked the gameplay. And I also liked the game of Risk. Those were the two I got interested in. Um, if you have any games that uh, you and your kids, or especially your kids, are interested in, please send them the live stream so we can see um, and we can compare, compare some of the uh, some of the things that we've gone through with those games, or we can match it up to be comparisons to those games. Um, other games that have become more popular to me and my family are the games of like Ticket to Ride, 
uh, Settlers of Catan. I mean, I have a whole uh, sh shelf system behind the video of all the different games. I could read them off. We've got Risk, we've got Access and Allies. Actually, we have three different types of Risk. Everything from Operation to um, all the ones that, uh, you know, the company that Cranium, that made Cranium. All of these, these ones, Apples to Apples, uh, a lot of co-op games, a lot of competitive games. Um, so when I, so going back to my, my history, when I got out of high school, I went to college and I had a one class that made all the difference in my life. Um, even though I was start studying architecture, I had to take an English class. And of course, most kids ask English. I'm not, that's not going to be my career. So I'm in effort into that. But because I took one of the assignments and made it more uh, connected to me, closer to me, it changed my whole life. So basically, I went to this English class and one of the assignments halfway through the term was to create a one page essay on a product that would change the world. But it had to be doable from a dorm setting. And that's great and all. Um, it would have been uh, it would have been just another assignment. But I took it a step further. All of a sudden, every uh, assignment that I had in that English class then becomes became something else to develop that game. And so actually in that class, I went from having B's and C's from that in that class I had A's. It had to do with me. I wanted to know this stuff. Um, and so after that class, every class I went to, everything from business class, construction, all these different things. I took little bits and pieces for every one of these classes and it developed this game. So basically, the game basically developed itself. So yeah, so the game basically developed itself. So by the time I was almost graduating, I had a product that was 100%. It already had all the images, all the history written, everything. And so what I did was I took that information, I took that, those cards, and I printed them. I spent over 10 grand just printing this game. Now, the one thing I didn't know about, the History Channel came up with their own game. And when I was pr promoting this to distributors and retailers, they told me, we have a choice. We could take your game, which has no backing, no marketing, no money to market, or we could take the History Channel's game, which has millions of dollars behind it. It's being promoted all around the world. It's gonna be this huge thing. It's gonna be this big old, um, this very successful game. And yeah, it might have been, but it lasted three years. Because the History Channel came up with that game at that time, I was blessed to have a wife that told me to put away the game and go get a real job. And that's what I did. I put it on the shelf and I went to go work construction. I was building homes for a while until the recession hit. And I actually had to move to another location, start a job there. The recession hit there as well. And in the end, I ended up in Alaska. I was doing work for the whole state of Alaska, doing contracts, construction, renovations, and land acquisitions for all the fish and game for the state of Alaska. And it was great because I was able to get certain life experiences that I needed in order to, when I was teaching some kids about entrepreneurship, they wanted to see what I produced. So I brought them the first edition, which is completely different than what this is. But I brought them the first uh, edition. They wanted to play it then. They played around, and they wanted more cards. They thought it was the most amazing thing. And the fact that they could actually meet the, the creator. And yeah, that, that's, that is quite a cool thing for, for youth to be able to meet the person that actually put it together. Because for one thing, a lot of youth have the problem of, well, that's great and all. I mean, there's all these there and companies out there, but I'm just a nobody. I'm just a little guy. Well, so was I. My dad was military. We had no business background in our, in our whole family. And then all of a sudden I was able to create this. And yeah, I might have put it on the shelf for 11 years, but I was able to gain um, life experiences. So two great learned from this game was one, every class that I went to back in college, after I produced it, I had a cause. If you want to have your kids or if you want 
to have more meaning in the classes that you take, find a product, project, anything you want to do, but find something that will bring you to each of these classes and you'll be learning for that one thing. And you won't just be learning for that one thing because ultimately I didn't go to construction class to learn about creating a card game. So I still learned those lessons. But because I was there for my cause, I actually became more knowledgeable in those things. So um, the, the second thing that was learned, that great idea, it might have to go on the shelf for a while. It's maybe not right for the right time for that, uh, for that product to come out. And so by giving life experiences, it might be a better time to bring it up. So sorry, I'm going into my entrepreneur uh, mode. Um, I actually teach entrepreneurship. I'm actually starting a, um, a live stream vlog class coming up. And uh, I will be teaching about different parts of the great, um, the great skill of being an entrepreneur, including venting, uh, finding out what kind of entrepreneur you are and such. So let me go back to the game. So um, I had all these kids that wanted more cards. So I started hiring on illustrators and I had to find a business partner. I had to find funding. I actually did a fundraiser online called Kickstarter. It was a great fundraiser. We're actually doing another one October 17th. So we'd love to have your, your support. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on. But uh, this game taught me a great deal. And so now it's bigger than I could ever expect because now we're going into video games. Now we've sold over 18,000 games. Um, this is four years since I brought this back out. And the first four years I was being part-time because one, I was working for the state of Alaska. Then I moved down to Missouri and I became the stay-at-home dad when all my wife went back to school. And then I um, actually became a real estate agent to pay some of the bills outside of the convention season because most of, the, most of the, the money, the revenue that was coming in was coming because of homeschooling conventions and gaming conventions. And again, we sold 18,000 games. I mean, it wasn't some, it's not something that's um, been small. This year is the first time that we've actually gone full-time. Uh, our revenue streams have, have increased astronomically and our production has um, increased uh, exponent exponentially. Um, the, the new things that are coming up is we just partnered on with a sculptor from Marvel and DC Collectibles. That's right. We're actually going to China at some point with them to check out some of the factories and to see his, um, his, the way he works and his jobs. Um, we have the video game coming out as I was talking about. We have an app. Okay, so I wanna go get ahead of myself. I'll tell you about the different programs that we have in just a, a few minutes. Let me tell you about the gameplay. These are your cards, historical conquest cards. They have everything from different uh, conquerors, leaders, armies, people to help you conquer the world. That's one of the goals of the game. And one, way, one of the ways to win is to conquer the world. Second way of winning is by increasing the morale. And so there are also events, locations, documents. And then when it comes to morale, there's also people like authors, um, actors and actresses, and such. And these people increase what's called morale points. Your morale is actually at the top of your, your mat. I know you can't see in the, the stream, but if you go to the tutorials on our YouTube channel, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And so because of the morale, and because they're the that's one way of winning, it's basically you're trying to get your, your morale from zero to 3,000 points. And your authors, musicians, and artists will help you climb that, those ranks. At the same time, your um, the, uh, events like the, the Donner Party, the Great Depression, the Black Plague, yeah, those will bring down your opponent's morale as well. So you're fighting over morale and over land. In conquering, just like the game of Risk, this is like a mixture of games like Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Magic, and also the gameplay of Risk. And so you're ultimately trying to dominate the world, either winning by peace through morale or to conquer all of your opponent's land cards. Land cards look like this. They have a green background. This one's actually Germany. Um, we have, in just this pile, New Zealand. 
Saudi Arabia, Greece, um, Quebec. Every single one of these cards, every card in the game has the history or statistics from like the countries and then the abilities which are actually based off that history. And so as you play, you'll use these abilities to create your strategy. And the great thing is no two games are ever the same. You never end the game the exact same way because it's the luck of the draw. You're draw drawing five cards every turn or up to five cards every turn and you're playing these cards and there's where you can play on someone else's turn. Um, there are surprise attacks. There's spies, assassins. Um, just in this hand, I've got leaders, technology, armies, explorers, and a location. My location actually stops keeping me for a turn. Great. I can play it on their rounds so when they're trying to attack me. When you usually, you'd only play cards when it's your turn. This is a turn-based game. So to start off, a really, really fast explanation. First thing you want to do is you want to separate all your land cards. As I was showing you, these go in the corner, far right corner. All the rest of your cards, the rest of your deck goes next to that. Now to start off the game, you grab one land card and that's where your civilization begins. So I'm starting in Libya, in Africa, top of my deck. The first thing I want to do is I want to defend that land. And so I'm going to play an army card right above that land. Now, if I find an explorer, it's a blue card like this, it says explorer on the top. All the categories of cards are found here and they're also color coordinated. So blue, take that explorer, I place it next to the land that I already found and I can grab a new land card. So now I'm in Germany, now I'm in Europe. Now the reason why you wanna remember which continent you're from, again, you're learning not just history, but also geography. And there's math and reading in this. But the reason why you wanna learn that continent is because you're going to be looking across the table at your opponent's hand or your opponent's battlefield and you want to see where they're at if they're in your same continent you want to defend that country with as many people as possible to keep your opponent from trying to steal them from you now you're allowed to play three cards per turn so i could play an additional card and then a card so i have five in my hand then your opponent does the exact same thing when they're done, they pull their cards, signals to me that it's my turn to play. The first two rounds is world peace. You cannot interact at all with cards. So what you do is you wait to the third round. And in order to attack, your morale needs to be up to 800 morale points. So you get to 800 morale points, you get to the third round, and you can start attacking. And it's not just attacking when it comes to lands. It will influence their civilization, bring down their morale, uh, make their people have to be discarded. Things like that. So, um, and again, every time I find, uh, I was just showing this off, every time I find an explorer, I find a no, new land. So I'm, ex I'm growing my civilization. But say, maybe I use up my lands, maybe I just wanna take my opponent's land. What you do is the bottom right-hand corner, so right here, you have two numbers. The one on the right, sorry, the one on the left is your attack, that's the first number. The second is defense. So you take that card, Attacking African, African country or whatever continent, but Africa in this one, and you find your opponent's African continent. In your land, in that one land, you count up all the attack points, the first number. So I have 3,400, and let's just say they have about 2,500. Who wins? Of course, I do. There's no dice in this. It's all self-contained on the cards. So if I win, he would actually have to get rid of one of his cards, his or her cards discard and then if i'm allowed to attack twice per turn if i attacked again they'd have to get rid of the second card and if there's no one defending their land by the time the, by the time those two attacks are done i would then claim that land so while you're playing the game you're actually being able to play with different people places events and you can actually read about them as you play the game. But the great thing is, if I want to learn history, I've got so many resources here to be able to play. I mean, I've got tons of starter decks, each containing 50 cards. We have seven of them, so automatically 50 times seven, 350. So I have 350 different cards in just the starter packs. But we also have expansion packs. The starter packs are all world history. It's like a mixture of different parts of history.
all throughout the world in each pack. But each pack has their own unique set of cards. Elam has 50, actually 51 cards. There's a one bonus card in there. Um, 51 cards that will not be found in any other deck. So it won't be found in Tesla. It won't be found in the Knights Templar. It won't be found in Queen Bodicea. His deck. So, but because they are all world history, the expansion decks, a lot of people are, say they're studying the Crusades or they just like the Wild West. Great. Let's add them to your deck. You're emphasizing that one era in the deck because in these 20 cards, there are um, one subject, one era. So these are all just on the first Crusades. This is all on the Wild West. We also have the Revolutionary War. So it's everything on um, Lexington and Concord, just the first day, which is a great story. By reading all the cards and the histories there, you get basically get to know every part of that first day. The Civil War in winter. And there will be more from the Civil War or the, the, Revolution, or the American Revolution in, um, in due time. We have a lot of... This is, I mean, this is history. We have so many different ways we can go. We can do a civil war one time. We can, okay. For example, the Industrial Revolution and the Renaissance are about to come out for them. Um, these are two expansion decks that are just going to be based on those two eras. By, by Christmas, we have to choose between four different ones that we've been choo choosing. We have the Samurai. We have um, the Pirates, um, the Vikings, and the Greeks. And every few months we come up with a new uh, expansion deck and also one starter pack per start one starter deck a year so we're constantly coming up with these these packs again so we've got the civil war the revolutionary war the wild west the um, first crusades we've got the world war one um, we also have the romans we have world war two and i think that's it um and we have all these other ones that are coming up uh, another thing that we use is you see how these cards are all sleeved? The problem with a lot of families, um, <laughs> they got into arguments for whose cards were whose, and not just families, but also friends that were playing. Like if you go to a tournament, there's an argument about, hey, that was my card. No, this is my card. You put them in sleeves that are multicolored. You could have one person in, in black sleeves, another person in yellow sleeves. You're never going to have a problem with mixing them up or losing your own cards. Good. So that, that's the basic game. If I run out of lands, you win the game. If your morale gets up to 3,000 points before mine does, you also win the game. And you can play for one or the other, or you can do a hybrid of whichever one works um, comes first. If you play for morale or for, um, yeah, if you play for morale, time, your game time is probably about a half hour to an hour and a half, the max hour and a half. Um, Especially when you start learning the cards, it goes a lot faster. If you're playing for world domination, much like Risk, it could take you three to four hours to play. But the great thing is, is that it's always different, so it keeps you captivated in the game. It's not this long, drawn-out game that you're like, oh, let's just get this done with. Um, so with that, I wanted to... Um, oh, sorry, there was one other thing. So there's the starter packs, which I showed you. They're the 50 cards. The larger packs then there's the expansion packs which are 20 cards and there's the play mats they're like very uh, large mouse pads almost and they're very valuable to play i mean you don't need them they're not essential to play but and this this is the sales guy saying this i'm supposed to talk you up right um this up here is the morale counter this is how you keep track of morale you can write it on a separate sheet of paper but in the history of this game, we went from not having the morale counter up here and people getting frustrated that they want us to figure out a way of counting morale more, uh, more effectively, more and easy, a little easier. Um, so we came up with the playmats morale counter. Now this portion is always available, where you have the rectangles to see where the, the cards start, and a really awesome image, which do not have to correlate to, to the uh, or correspond with the decks that you buy. But another great thing is my son actually uh, spilled juice 
across half of his play mat. And he was really scared that I'd be mad at him. I was like, no, don't worry about it. I took it, I threw it in the wash and it came right out. That's how great this material is. So we didn't go cheap when it came to um, making these, the, the ink will not run off of these. At least I've never had it happen before. Um, and they're not supposed to, it, it hasn't happened. Um, but wash them, do not dry them. Don't put them in the dryer, hang, um, run out. They, they will show a little bit of wrinkles when they come out of the washer. All you do is, um, loop it over something and the wrinkles will actually, um, come right out. It's like one of those wrinkle free shirts, except that these wrinkles to, do come out. not like those other shirts. Okay. So I want to tell you a little bit about programs that we have with historical conquest because you're not just buying a game this you might buy a deck of cards and in other games that's it they don't want to hear from you at all they just want to see your money all right and here's another thing you need to know unlike other cards this is what we call an lcg so it's not a ccg which is a collectible card game this is a living card game the difference is a ccg which is like Pokemon, Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh! You have to buy 100 decks just to get one card. There's a rare card hiding somewhere in these boxes. Well, I know people have actually bought crates of these boxes just to find one card. That's like $1,000 to find one card. Does that make sense to you? It didn't for me. So instead, each, each deck has its own unique set of cards. So if you want a certain, uh, a certain card, go online, read through um, our list of, of characters in each of these decks, and pick the deck you want. Or buy them all. There's like actually great discounts if you buy packages, anywhere up to 30% off. So just, just saying. Um, but we didn't like that idea of people wasting money just to find that one card. So one of the things that we did in order to have those rare cards, because we wanted rare cards, I know our players wanted rare cards, they want to be able to the hunt. The hunt is, is one of the things that drives CCGs to be so um, valuable or, or so, um, uh, so successful. So instead, what we did, contest. In this contest, you actually can um, create your own card. It's actually called the Create Your Own Card Contest. So this guy, if you were to submit an entry, it starts September 1st. Every year, September 1st, person's name, the history, a little summary of the history of that person. And this is anyone from history. So the more interesting the story, the more likely it is to become a rare card. Just saying. Um, things like Blackbeard. Again, I didn't even know Blackbeard was real until somebody submitted it for a rare card. And they actually won. They didn't win first. They were actually in the top 12. So we're going back to this and I'll explain that in a second. Um, you submit the history and the abilities they should have for the game. And if it's chosen as number one, you get $500. That's right. Just for submitting one, maybe even a hundred. So you could be doing this as a class assignment, sending a whole bunch of history of different people from history. Chosen as number one, you get $500. Every year it went up a hundred dollars. We start off at a hundred dollars and because it's the fifth um contest that we do that we're doing five hundred dollars and this is actually probably the cap but five hundred dollars for entering a certain person now you might not be the number one a little bummer but at the same time if you're in the top 12 the top 12 are made into cards we send you a stack of them that's right we send you a stack of them that you can share with your friends your family um people that you um shared the game with and such but out of those top 12 cards out at tournaments, conventions, um, if you order something online, we'll actually send you a rare card that same day or that same in that same package. So all these different ways of getting uh, more interest in the rare cards. But there's a lot of people that don't go to tournaments, they don't go to conventions, and they can't order something every month. That makes no sense. So what they did was, or what we did, is we created what's called the Rare Card Earning Program. You can actually send us a, um, you send us an, an email with a one-page essay about the person 
or place, event, or something to do related to these historical um, cards, th or the one rare card of the month. So this month it's Yi Sun Shin. And um, he has an amazing story. Just really fast, one of the most amazing things is he was, he was a Korean commander, um, naval commander, and he used 12 of his ships to defeat 200 Japanese ships. That's pretty awesome, right? And all these people have really awesome um, stories. So the Tungsten event was another one that was submitted. It didn't win number one, but it won the top 12. This was actually last month's, July's card. And this one was where a possible asteroid um, exploded right above Siberia, flattened um, hundreds of thousands of acres. Oh, or actually, you know what? Um, 770 uh, miles squared. So thousands and thousands of, of miles of trees, of forest. Luckily, not one person was hurt that was heard by many people, just this huge explosion. And funny enough, one of the essays that was sent in this month or last month, I really got a kick off of because they started sharing the, the theories of things that have happened that time and who reported it, uh, like the news article. So they really went in depth. They got really into uh, creating that essay about this, this one event. So there's all these different things. One last one I wanna show you, the Great Molasses Flood. Boston, Massachusetts, there was 2.3 million gallons of molasses running through the streets of Boston. How cool is that, really? So uh, the, the wave itself was 25 feet high by 116 feet long. And the really funny thing is because it was molasses and not water, it didn't go like 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour down the streets. No, it went 35 miles an hour which is just as slow as molasses. Okay, so enough of that program. That program, people um, signed up and we just started it. Um, we have entries coming in every month for the essay program and we're shipping out um, rare cards to all these people. So there are ways of getting rare cards. And the great thing is, is that right now, as this gets bigger, those rare cards will be less rare. So starting early, you get them, but all you need to do is register online. There's a $25 um, registration fee forever. And with that $25 re registration fee, it basically pays for the shipping. So we're not making money off it, but we wanted to give everyone the opportunity. Cards. Okay, um, really fast, because I know I'm getting a, lot, a little long-winded long and um, we're about 35 minutes into this. Uh, another program that's really great is, um, Again, I was talking to you about how this is not just a game where you buy a deck of cards or 100 decks of cards and that's it. No, this is a game where we use our players to beta test. We use our players for advice. Um, our players, if you go on our YouTube channel, we have a few that have come up with different versions of the game. One called Hidden Conquest. I don't know if you know the game Stratego, similar to the game of Stratego mixed in with all the other card games or all the other games that uh, History Channel was made of. Um, and History Channel, sorry, Historical Conquest. Um, and we have our first expansion game based off of the Revolutionary War coming out this year, or sorry, this next year. So you'll be able to play, instead of playing with the whole world with all different people from history, You'll be playing with just people from the Revolutionary War that you bought in the other decks to play that game. So you actually use the cards that we, you have and buy a few more to create a game that specifies just the Revolutionary War. And soon we'll have the World War II and other games like that. So our expansion games are going, um, are going to be coming out. And those are, um, I have to be careful what I'm going to tell you in what order because I wanna to get to everything and make sure that you get a well-rounded understanding of this company. Another thing that we do is we also do tournaments. All around the United States, we have what we call ambassadors. The ambassadors are, they go out to area, they talk to retailers, they talk to um, local churches and 
school groups, after school activities and such, and they set up these games. The great thing about being an ambassador, and you can be um, as young as the age of eight, though you have to have a sponsor, such as your parents, if you're young, under the age of 18. Now, with this, you will actually be able to host tournaments. You can sell your own inventory. That's right, you can buy uh, this product for a cheaper, or, or less expensive on the ambassador marketplace, and then you can sell it to, your, to the people that come to the tournaments. Or, at the tournaments, you can take orders, and then when you go to the next tournament, you can sell it again. So you can take that, that order that somebody um, gave you, you make the purchase, it's shipped to you, so you only pay for one shipping. If there's 10 people that order, instead of paying 10 times the shipping, you're paying one time. And we ship you all the product, um, and you're able to then distribute it at the, at the tournament. So those are two ways of earning money. Also, when you find a retailer that wants to be at their store, yeah, we will actually um, send you a commission for doing that or send the ambassador a commission. And not just off the first time, but every time they make an order, as long as they stay active, which means you host four tournaments a, a year. So basically every three months, you host a tournament. Um, another thing is at these tournaments, you actually pass out rare cards. Every time someone goes to the tournament, one of the benefits of or going to the tournament is to get one of those rare cards. Then if you win the tournament, you also have incentives for winning the tournaments. There's always an incentive at the tournaments now. Didn't used to be, but now there is. And so you might get like a free play mat. Um, actually, the, the one uh, benefit for September, August and September, if you host a tournament, the winner get, or no, sorry, it's not the winner. It's the person that brings the most friends. This month, it's not the winner of the, the tournament, but the person that brings the most friends, they get, get actually a free samurai play At this team, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, it's really great that's coming out is we have a video site. You'll see that it's supposed to come out in November of 2017. We're coming up with the first video game for history where you can actually play against people around the world. And yeah, that is significant because a lot of times you might buy a deck and it's only playing with your family. Well, yeah, that's fun and all. But a lot of times your family's busy. They don't can't they can't play. So you can actually play against people around the world. Play with other people. And yes, for parents that are worrying, there is monitoring monitoring on it. So your kids are safe on there, or at least we'll try to keep them as safe as possible. Um, but also, it'd be great for you to be able to check in and ask them how the game went and what you guys talked about. In addition to that, um, I told you about the sculptor, the Marvel and DC collectibles sculptor that has signed on to to sell the game or to create action figures for the game so first sculptures like a six to eight inch um, figurine of someone in history including tesla george washington miyamoto musashi who's the greatest swordsman that, that ever lived uh a nor uh viking who's the greatest archer supposedly that ever lived and and more people than that jonah ark Richard the Lionhearted, all these people are going to be made into sculptures. So you can put them on your desk, you can um, put them in your classroom if you're a teacher, or um, you can just have them around your house. So, but the really cool thing is those large sculptures, are they going to be shrunk? Size? And these are going to be your morale counters. So he's going to be working on that um, until the end of the year. Um, let's see, I'm going to go into, oh yeah. Also, we have really awesome t-shirts. You see the images in our in our game. Things like this, with different wording on it. I mean, we're gonna have some very clever ones coming out, but also if you just want the image on your t-shirt, we'll be selling those as well. And so you can actually have a historical conquest t-shirt. Don't worry, we won't be branding the whole thing. Uh, we might put the brand on the, on the side, but we want you to be able to enjoy like the Nikola Tesla t-shirt. Um, one of the, I, I won't tell you some of the, I, some of the shirts that are gonna come out. You'll see when they come out in the store. Um, uh, two more things that are really important. So I was telling you about the video game. When we get the video game up and running and um, perfected, then we're gonna come up with the app. Now the app is some new technology. I can't explain everything about it yet, 
But first you can play the game, just like you would on the on the video game, the online version. But the second part, we call it the largest treasure digital treasure hunt in the world. And we're actually partnering up with a lot of different companies, uh, government associations or organizations, departments, um, in order to get this going. But the largest treasure hunt where you can actually, well, I think what we're, the plan is to start off in the United States and to do this treasure hunt. And then we're going to go bigger than that. So if you like treasure hunts and you like traveling, you're going to love this. And if you like, no, oh, okay, I need, I need to stop it there because I'll tell you a little bit too much. Uh, and there's proprietary um, information in there. So uh, stay tuned though, we'll get it to you. And another thing that's really great is we are now creating curriculum to help teachers, to help homeschooler, homeschooling families, um, to help anybody that wants to be able to use this game as a learning device and not just a game. Again, if you wanna play it just for, to play a game, Great, you don't need to know anything about history and you don't even have to read the summaries, just the abilities. Now, just by playing the game, hope you don't mind, you'll actually start learning who these people are. And that's not a bad thing because you're not being forced to learn history. This is an enjoyable game where you just have fun and you're able to do that at the same time. Um, one other thing that I did not mention is the rules. So I was teaching you the basics of the game. But in every starter deck, you have the rule sheet. Yeah, it's all fairly wordy over here. I don't know. If, yeah, there you go. You can see a little better. It's a little wordy. But me personally, I don't like reading rules. I would rather watch someone play and explain to me how to play. Well, guess what? We have a YouTube channel totally dedicated to teaching people how to play and also giving them more information about the game and uh, historical people. Um, well, one of the classes that I mentioned, I'm going to be doing entrepreneurship. That's going to be part of that. We're actually going to be creating a curriculum and everything for that. But that's going to come after I start doing these classes online to, to gauge the interest and everything. But on the site, we have other things that are coming up. So stay tuned for that and come go check it out. Um, now, one thing I started mentioning is his, uh, Historical Conquest will have expansion games. Well. Historical Conquest is just the pilot program. We're not just going to be uh, teaching math, geography, uh, reading, and um, and history. That's just this one game. We actually have a math game, adding, subtracting, multiplication, division, and fractures, fraction, fractions. Um, we have a game coming out very soon, and it teaches this, but <coughs> just like historical conquest it's not forcing you to learn history it's not this is not going to force you to learn math it's not going to be like any of those other educational games this is going to be an epic game based off of cult, uh pop culture other games that are out there and so if you want to learn math yeah play it to learn math if you just want to have fun you'll never even really know that you're learning math at the same time it will never be a focus of learning it but you're going to be doing it at the same time that is actually the concept behind most of our games that are coming up. We have one that's uh, doing social studies. We have one on personal finance. We have another one on entrepreneurship. We have all these different ones coming out, which will teach you every subject in school, but not um, forcing you to, to do it. So yes, you're learning it, but it doesn't feel like those other games or those other, yeah, those other educational games. And no, no offense to them, they have a purpose. We have a different purpose. We have a cause. Our cause is the, the greatest driving factor in this. Um, his, just so you know, Historical Conquest was somebody offered to buy it. And we said no. Because the idea is someone buys Historical Conquest, they'll take the cards, they might take the illustrations, might take some of the history or some of the information, and they could totally change um, Historical Conquest into whatever they want, even taking the education out of it, like other games that were based on education, and then they took the education out of it. Our cause is more important than money. And yes, we need money to survive. That's a given. Uh, and we, we do find it in sales right now, but that's not our end goal. Our end goal is to create 
a game for every subject in the, the public schools or the homeschooling and make it exciting for youth to play. Then we're also creating curriculum. This is also has some proprietary information, but we're creating curriculum that's never been done before. These are innovations that um, will change the education pr uh, process forever. And so that's one of the things that we are most um, excited about is creating a way of making education exciting. And just like when I was in, in college, every class had a new meaning because I was actually learning something for an end cause. And so with this game, with the curriculum that we're writing, with the video games, with everything, it's all based on one thing. Is making education more exciting because this game itself has a great history of that. Yeah, I actually have so many different examples of where kids were able to make their learning process so much more exciting. I'll share a few with you. So um, I think he was in Arizona, this young man. Um, his, his mom actually wrote me an email thanking me about what I created. Now, this is great for an entrepreneur and an inventor to have feedback about how people love the game. It makes us feel good. But what she told me was amazing. She said that they went to, I think it was probably Blockbuster, but a rental store to get a movie. And there was a poster that had the Enigma on it. Um, now, the father started explaining to the wife who didn't know what the Enigma was, that it was one of the first computers. The son that was there though, he corrected his dad and said, dad, that's not true. He said, and he basically gave an explanation of it, of how he was using World War II. The mom looks at him and he's like, how do you know this? And he said, I learned it in the game that you stole me or that you, you bought me. Just from the game, he was able to do that and he has a fun time doing it. And he actually help, does a lot of help for us down in um, down Arizona. So shout out to you, uh, Carter, for, for doing that. Also, um, Another great story from Alaska. This is actually a family up there that does has done a lot for us. They actually have, I'm trying to remember, I think they have five boys, one girl. The youngest was five years old. Um, actually, I think he was four years old when the kids started playing. Five years old, I get an email from his mom. His mom writes me and said, was thanking me for the game. And then told me that at age five, the, the five-year-old had learned to read, and had memorized every card. Now, there are 350 in the starter decks. There are also, let's see, 20 times seven, 140. So that's 490 cards in just this, plus another 50 cards in the rare card program. That's a lot of cards to memorize everything on them. But this young man, he saw his brothers and sisters playing the game constantly. He wanted to do it. He wanted to learn the cards. And when he started reading them, he started memorizing all the cards. How great is that? Yeah. Um, so I have a, a lot of other stories I could tell you about. We have actually academies, um, private schools that and homeschooling groups that actually have classes named Historical Conquest. Yeah, this is huge. This is getting so much bigger than I ever would have expected. I expected this to become like a Yu-Gi-Oh Pokemon where it's selling cards and that's, well, they have TV shows and stuff like that. Just wait. Um, but uh, yeah, this is getting huge. So I know you guys have been here for a really long time, 50 minutes, and I really appreciate you going through this whole thing. There's so much information here and I could keep going, but if you want more information, go to our website, check it out. If you want uh, to buy something from the store, I highly recommend it because every kid will learn from this game. And um, I'm actually going to give you something that's a little bit added benefit for watching this podcast or this uh, vlog, live stream, whatever. I'm going to give you a discount code for 10% off. With that discount code, you go online, you enter the discount code, you're going to get 10% off. Um, the discount code is alternative because we're talking about alternative games. This is a game that's the alternative to Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, and a lot of other games that are out there. Ones that kids, one thing, kids are getting bored of. 
because it always adds, it ends the same way. Uh, a lot of kids don't know how to play them. This is really easy to learn, and the strategy makes it rich with um, complexity, but it doesn't have to be hard to, to understand. And if you don't like reading rules, please go to our YouTube channel, watch the tutorial. We have uh, multiple ones on there for you. We created this game for you, for your, if you're a parent, your children, um, for adults that just want to play a really fun game. Isn't it cool that at the same time, you can actually learn about Like of the Dog or Margaret Thatcher, Samurai Warriors, um, different countries like Libya, Germany, New Zealand, all from playing a simple game. And it's, it's not even just simple. It's very complex when you get into the strategies, but it's simple to learn. So thanks again for um, joining me in this hour. And if you have any questions, our email address, our general email address is historicalconquest at gmail.com. And I might um, respond to you in my own personal, my company email, um, or we might just send you an email through our general account. But we want to answer every question that you have. Now, if it's about the, how to play the game, we actually answer those on our YouTube channel. So you send us a question, we'll give you a shout out, and we'll create a YouTube. So if anybody else has that same question, they can go online and read about it, which really helped us free up some time because we have people asking us the exact same question. And yeah, we could do a form letter where we just send it the exact same answer, or we can say, go to YouTube. Here's the link to it. Check out that video. And there you go. You can learn how to play the game. If you have any questions, most likely it's on YouTube already because we have plenty of uh, people that have asked questions. And truthfully, the questions have stopped. So please, if you have questions, send them to us. We're running out of questions to do these, what we call Tutorial Tuesdays. And on our site, on our YouTube channel, we actually have different, um, different days. Uh, see, we have different topics for each day. So we have Minnesota Monday. Usually it's telling about something in history. Uh, right now we're, going, we're talking about the current wars between te uh, Edison and Tesla. Really interesting, we just went through the electric chair. The next one we're going through is a, a dam in West Virginia um, and talking about the products that they create. Um, also, if you're interested, um, oh, sorry. So that's Minnesota Monday. Uh, Tutorial Tuesday is basically how to play the game. If you have any questions, we'll answer them there. Whatever Wednesday is basically whatever I want to talk about. Um, a lot of times it could be anything from like entrepreneurship to um, the creation of new parts and pieces of the game. Um, actually, I did one on cre creating your, or increasing your energy throughout the day and uh, going into life, <clears throat> going with a life without stimulants like coffee or energy drinks. You don't need them. You really don't. You, you are high on life. That's how God created your body. You don't need these things. If you want them, fine. I mean, go for it. Um, but the necessity, your body does not need them. If you train it to be uh, to need it, yeah, it will need it. Um, anyways, so that's one of my vlogs. So there are a lot of different vlogs out there. Check them out. Um, again, Thursday is Sneak Peek Thursday. So I'll actually tell you about new things that are coming out. Actually, on one of the sneak peeks, I actually have a little bit too much information when it comes to the world's largest digital treasure hunt. So check that one out if you want more information on there. Uh, that, I think that was still a little vague. Um, but And then there's Family Friday. So when you guys send us... Uh, fan mail will actually read it to you on YouTube and share it with the world. Or if you want to send us a video about what you think about the game, please do. We'll actually post that as well. So um, again, thank you for, for joining us in this hour. And if you have any questions, contact us. Um, go on our YouTube channel and post them in the comments below. Anything like this is will help us create the more perfect game. Because of course, as I said, this is a community game. This is not just our game. This is not just um, our product and that's it. Done deal. This is your game. This is your product. Everything that we create in the future is, is because of you. So please join us in, in this adventure. Help us make Historical Conquest and all our other games that are coming out be more epic, more exciting, and let's change the education system forever. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Um, come join us on our next broadcast. We've got one coming up on Tuesday about entrepreneur, entrepreneurship starting at 10, um, Wednesday, Thursday, all of them start at 10. And we'll share more with you about the game and 
other things. If you have questions, please send them, send us an email, especially about a, uh, a podcast that you like to, or sorry, not a podcast, a live stream that you'd like to see. And join us on those live streams. Ask us any questions you might have. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.